All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, referencing a 2018 article from Tribune, the impending reordering of the sequence of elections has serious cost implications, both in terms of the direct cost of conducting elections, as well as the cost of individual, corporate, and government uh, business, uh, businesses shut down, owing to the compulsory restriction of human and vehicular movement on elections days in the country. Now, um, the Conference of Civil Society of Nigeria had said the 2023 polls should start with the governorship election and not the presidential election as contained in the INEC timetable, noting that the reordering of the election sequence is necessary to avoid any disruption that might arise from the conduct of the presidential poll. Now, today we want to look at the pros and the cons of reordering the sequence, right? Even though INEC has clearly said that they are not going to do that, but it's still important for us to just analyze the situation. Um, if we were to reorder the, what's it called, the coming elections, what would be the pros and what would be the cons? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818038463. You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Wayshow. So, um, before we quickly bring in our guests, because our guest is on standby, I just want to hear your two cents on this. Adriela, let me come to you first, right? I mean, when you heard, when you read the story around the re-sequencing of the elections, what came to your mind and, you know, your findings? Okay, so my question is why now? Okay. Why, do you, why the agitation now? This has been going on since 2018. There's been a whole lot when the president... Um, I mean, signed the um, the new electoral law in February. So, I mean, INEC has had ample time. Th th there has been ample time to really engage on this subject matter. Mm -hmm. And I think that bringing this up now, it's it's um it's a very delicate um, subject because already there is a lot of. Um, agitation in the country towards the 2023 elections, and I just feel like. Anything right now that does not, that is not um, geared towards that, automatically may or may not influence people's um, thoughts towards the um, the success of the election, so to say. So I'm not sure that um, this is what we should be talking about right now because I mean I don't want to have to be thinking that um, February um, <laughs> will it happen? Will it not happen? Or again, I'm 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 of I'm of the opinion that I would also like to understand the why. Okay, maybe outside of the why now. The second thing is, what is the reason why they feel, or why do they feel that a gubernatorial election is much more should come first rather mm -hmm. than the presidential? Is it because they are afraid of bandwagoning? Like, okay. Maybe the popular um, votes, you know, once you vote for the president, then automatically everybody moves to the popular to the party, party mm. and all that. But is that even visible? Because there are, there are there's a process. Mm. The electoral law, I'm not sure that it allows that you can just up and just change your... Well, the new mm. electoral laws, mm. I hear that if you decide to decamp because the <laughs> you, are, you are trying to follow a party that is in at the center, mm. you have to forfeit your... Because the seat Whatever. belongs to the party now. Exactly. No longer individuals. individuals. So okay. let me hear your thoughts, um, Chinelo. Huh. Okay, I mean, when I heard this, I think it, it makes sense, okay. right? Because it's like building a house. You want to build a house from the roof. From the foundation, rather, to mm. the roof, not from the roof to the foundation. So if you're saying that you want to start with the gubernatorial polls before the presiden presidential polls, that makes sense. Like Adjola rightly said, why now? Why are we bringing this now when we have just mm. less than six months to go? But thinking about the truism of politics, that politics is local, mm. right? Mm. So I think putting gubernatorial polls before presidential polls will actually consolidate democracy at the grassroots. Mm. This is my opinion, mm. right? So, and I, I, I think that it would also necessitate the, um, how do I put this? Necessitate the readjustment. Mm. Saying politics look out necess necessitates the readjustment of putting the gubernatorial polls before the presidential polls. Mm. Okay, so uh, let me quickly say that for me, I think, I mean, like, I think Adiola tried to, to, to harp on the point. You know, Nigeria still believes in the center dictating mm. where things go. So if the power still belongs to the center, like the center is the most powerful, which is mm. also rock, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. is the most powerful, yeah. it will only make sense that people would want to gear mm. their minds. So, so it, it's very possible that wherever the presidential elections land as winner, 
Mm. It's, it's possible that we might now then have mm -hmm. House of Representa uh, Representatives House seats, gubernatorial seats, yeah. House parties. of Assembly seats, yeah. going to that party mm. wherever the winner emerges from. But let me bring in our guest. Right, Prince Adebayo is a public as, um, affairs commentator who provides advice on national issues and participates in Nigerian politics as a member of the third force. Now, on January 15, 2023, Prince Adewale Adebayo declared his intention to run for the office of the Nigerian president. Now, he is the presidential candidate of the Social Democratic Party, and he's joined us live uh, from, I think, Enuguna or Owe. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you very much. Uh how are you? We are very well, thank you. So, I mean, let's quickly just jump into this conversation because we have so much to unpack, right? I mean, some will consider that your party, right, is not, is not considered, rather, as a power block, especially in this era, right, where it seems like the power blocks are, you know, setting, setting other parties, the PDP, the APC, mm -hmm. and maybe now Labour trying to join the party. Some would say SDP is not a power block, right? So you are the presidential candidate for the SDP, right? If you were to just go by this re-sequencing or reordering of the elections, what, first of all, would you prefer and why? I'm okay with what think is doing right now. What people should learn to be mature. Hmm. If you want to vote for SDP, you must know the manifesto of SDP, you must believe in the candidates. You have several months to listen to the candidate. You should be able to make up your mind. I, I, I think this idea of quarreling over sequence is um, <laughs> part of the trickery yeah. of the past and lack of confidence in, in your supporters. So I believe that um, the election is held today. I can almost know how many votes I will get. I know where my support bases are. If the election is held on the 25th of February, which is how it is scheduled now, I know where I want to be. So I don't think that we, the SDP, want to waste our time on such uh, permutations and all of that. What's important is for us to make our message clear to the people. Farewell to poverty and insecurity. And there's nothing too difficult to understand in that one. Uh, my profile is well understood by people, and the candidates are contesting. If anybody who looks at my message, looks at the message of hope again, 2023, and is still looking at APC and its uh, dinosaur of a candidate, or looking at PDP and its own repentant horde of uh, mismanagers, why would you still? I don't think that uh, uh, the sequence of the election is going to make any difference at all. People who are voters have to take responsibility for who they want to be the president of Nigeria. Hmm. So I don't have a problem with the sequence. So, but, but part of the agitation, right, was the fact that somehow um if the presidential election does not go in certain direction it might disrupt other elections because of the i put it in quotes the perceived violence that might erupt i mean lately we've been hearing so many security reports a lot of people are leaving the country because they are still afraid that this 2023 elections might come out you know might turn out violent right so does it not then make sense to say, you know what, let's get everything out of the way in terms of electionary. So whatever it happens, because it seems, because I mean, you know yeah. that being at the center is yeah. the A or and the B all in this country. So since they say, okay, that is like the hottest seat that everybody is fighting for. Why don't we just, you know what, let's get every other small, small elections out of the way and save the, uh, the cherry <laughs> on the icing for later. Does that not make sense? It's a product of idle thinking. Really? Number one, <laughs> there is no violence coming anywhere. Mm, okay. This election will be done. The winner will emerge. If Nigeria is lucky, it will be me. And there will be no violence, no problems. We will start now digging ourselves out of 
the miasma we find ourselves in. Whoever wins the election, there will be no violence. I can guarantee you that. People are trying to scaremonger everybody. Even the security al uh, alerts brought out by certain uh, diplomatic missions for their citizens, they are overblown. There's no rational basis for them. I've been traveling around the country. I go around this country. I was in Plateau yesterday. I'm in Imo now. And I'm going to be in uh, Delta tomorrow. I'm going around this country. I'll be in Kano on the uh, day after. There is no violence coming but, but anywhere. But I beg to differ, sir. There is no foreign people trying to invade no. Nigeria. Citizens of Nigeria. I beg, I beg to differ, sir, because on. just on Friday here, on Lagos Ibadan Expressway, mm. a few people were kidnapped. I mean, for the first time, I saw someone that was close to home kidnapped. And a ransom of 50 million was demanded, right? And they, from the reports that we gathered, the people that were kidnapped were a lot of people that were kidnapped on that Le uh, Lagos Ibado Expressway. So when you say that, I mean, it is unfounded or maybe it, they are trying to overbloat this security warning that they are given, I beg to differ, sir, because we know that where we are currently in the country, we have a lot of security lapses. We have a lot of loose ends that we need to tighten up. We have a lot of loopholes in our security system. So it, it, it would be unfair to say that um, the people that are calling out for this warning, that um, they are over, over, maybe over, they are being over dramatic or something. I, I, I beg to differ, sir. Correct you, me if I'm maybe wrong. You should, maybe you should look at the distinction between what you are saying and what they put out. Hmm. What we know in this country is that we have banditry, kidnapping, insecurity, armed robbery, and all sorts of violent kinds. We have it. That's why my motto is farewell to poverty and insecurity. It is different from saying Abuja is falling. There's going to be multiple uh, attacks and the government is going to collapse and we should be like, we will, like, we will be like Afghanistan. That is different. Crimes occur all the time and the irresponsibility of the government of the day is the reason why we have not got effective policing and manning of all these uh, crime centers. And I believe that this will not affect our election. We will be able to vote in a proper government that will come and deal with security. But I'm, I'm not going to accept the situation where foreign nations who are supposed to be friendly nations are going to be throwing out panic mm -hmm. that the whole city will be invaded oh, and the government will collapse. And now they are running away. That's a different oh, thing. Okay, so I let, can I? That, but, sorry, sir. Sorry I'm to interrupt. That, sorry, I'm not saying that the country is safe from criminality. I say it all the time. I experience it. I'm not saying the country is free from kidnappers. I am saying that that one, there will be no violence in the election. The election will hold. A winner will emerge. The losers will probably go to tribunal. That's the end of it. Secondly, that this country has strong enough armed forces and security agencies that we cannot be overrun by Kabul in Afghanistan. <laughs> and Nigerians who are running abroad should stop that. There's no such thing. Okay, so However, we need to be vigilant in our neighborhoods. We need to govern our highways. We need to police our bushes to ensure that kidnappers who you find on Kaduna uh, Lego, uh, Katuna Abuja Highway. Now they have reached Lake Ibadan Highway. They are all over the southeast where I am now. So I know. I'm not saying I'm not blind to that. But this is a country that can be regarded as a stable country with a very weak uh, security architecture as run by the government. And we will be able to deal with it. There's no reason to panic. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I just want to ask that do you agree? that when you talk about crime, crime can be, because from what you're trying to say, you already understand the kind of crime that we have in this country. But you know that crime can grow balls. Mm. Crime can become a lot more bracing, yeah. right? Do you agree with that? That it is possible that it might start as a petty thief and end up as an armed robber, right? It's possible. We, we, we know that. I don't think we need to have... Um, 
the argument that no, we're not arguing. We're just having a conversation. We know, for example, <laughs> excuse me, we know that what is happening in Nigeria is unacceptable. Okay. There is no country that can accept a situation where marauders block highways, mm. kidnap a deputy vice chancellor, mm. kidnap students, ask for ransom. And the red line has been attacked. People are kidnapped and billions are paid. They invaded my farm and uh, captured the expatriates who work for me. I've had my own home where with my family inside, invaded by armed robbers in the city of Abuja a few years ago. So I know what criminality is. What I am saying is that none of this is going to stop the election from both. If you go to Brasilia, if you go to Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, there a lot of car mugging, people being attacked on the on the highway. It's happening in Brazil, but they had their election. What is happening in Nigeria is that President Muhammadu Buhari, the APC, and many people in government have failed to take measures that will secure the people of the country. Hmm. The solution to that is to elect a government that is going to come and deal with it, that will invest in police and intelligence and keep the uh, country safe. It is not to invest in panic, to say that because of this criminality, hmm. elections will not be peaceful, elections will not hold, and people will start to run the task. If you know the number of people in the last 10 days who have been consulting me, saying that they want to leave the country, they want to run away, some want to run from Abuja to Lagos, and some want to run to whatever. I am saying to them, don't, don't endanger yourself. There is insecurity in many parts of Nigeria. There's no part to run to that you cannot run into some situation. Hold your nerve. But the country is not going to fall. What the Americans, the British, and all of them are saying is not correct. Okay. So in, I think I've lived I, I... in America for many years. Have, we have witnessed people bringing guns to attack hmm. shopping malls kill students in schools. Absolutely. It doesn't mean that American government is going to fall. That's yeah, what I'm making. I get but I don't endorse the current system where I, the country is not being kept safe by an incompetent government that absolutely. needs to be replaced. All right, so we'll go back to the conversation because it was good that we, we, we cleared <laughs> that one out of the way. Yeah. And I 100% agree with you, Prince. But let's quickly go on a very short break because I know the ladies have questions on this resequencing. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, so if you just tuned in, we're discussing the 2023 general elections. We're asking what are the pros and the cons of if there were to be a reordering of the sequence, right? What would that be? And we have with us Prince Adewale um, Adebayo. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to the rate 1 8038 All right, so Prince, you are the presidential candidate for the SDP. And you have clearly said a lot of things that you're going to do about this um but let's go back to the conversation why we even decided you know what we needed to have this conversation today and i think um Jella, you had a question right <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. okay so um i i want to know why um the gubernatorial election i mean you know there is a the, there is a clamor to have the gubernatorial elections first you know that's that's the whole essence of this um, resequencing. resequencing so I'm thinking that should that not be a function of the awareness of people? Because I think that if people are truly aware of the role each of these um, officers hold in the in the um, in nation building, people will be more. Um, they will participate more, you know, in the process. And regardless of what comes exactly. back. Exactly. I think the prince Whether, already mentioned it when he yes. said, if they know you as exactly. a candidate. Exactly. Yeah, go ahead, exactly. sir. Exactly. Okay, let me say something clear. There are two sets of elections to be held. Mm -hmm. One, let's just call it national elections. The president and the national assembly. That one is held nationwide. But for the second set, governorship and houses of assembly, that one is partially full and 
That is where the problem lies. There are only 28 out of 36 governorships that are going to be held. Okay. So in, for example, Imo State, where I am today, there will be no governorship election next year. The same thing for my home state, uh, Ondo, state well, where I come from. Uh, there will be no governorship election mm -hmm. there as well. Anambra will have no governorship election. Edo will have no governorship election. And a few others like that. So then they will have houses of assembly election, but they will have no governorship election. So I think that INEC has thought about it, mm. and INEC did consult stakeholders exactly. all across. Because consulted all the political parties, civil society, everyone, before coming up with the notion that the best thing to do is to hold the presidential election first, because that one is taking place nationwide. And they want to get that right. Once you get that right, then they can take resources to places where they have governorships and the rest of it. So for me as a person, it is only, it, it, it used to be an argument in our school whether if we did mathematics exam, in the morning, you are more likely to pass than if you did it in the evening. It is those people that are weak in math that used to worry about such a thing. If you know your, if you know your onions, I want to have my own election first and hopefully get elected. Why should I bother about saying that another person's election should come before mine? So I don't have a problem with it. And I want politicians to stop looking for advantages. The simple thing about this election, politicians must not be afraid of the people. The people are now getting enlightened. The people are interested. I am not worried about any other person. I believe that there are 176,180 polling units. If I walk in each and every one of them, I will be able to win the election. Don't be timid. Don't be intimidated. Don't worry about bad water. People will vote deliberately and intentionally. They are not going to be confused when they are going to the ballot. Those who would vote for Mr. A will not vote for Mr. B. I can guarantee you that, provided that the message is clear. The problem facing many of my colleagues who are complaining is that you can meet a presidential candidate in a bus or on an airplane, and you will not recognize who he is. People need to work harder. People need to go around. There are people I know who are running for president who have not been to five states. And they'll be telling INEC to go and the other election and all of that. <laughs> Let us go around Bo. the 8,800 wards, 176,000 wards, units, 36 states, 774 local government, uh, six zones. Go and do the work. There is no part of Nigeria where there's no photo waiting for you. I can guarantee you that. Okay, so I was going to say to you that um, it's interesting how you're just dismissing this, uh, what's it called, this reordering. Mm -hmm. Because given that, I feel like it's supposed to favor, um, in quotes, right, um, um, smaller parties or the parties that, that have a smaller recognition. Yes, because if, for instance, Something happens tomorrow and an SDP becomes the president, an SDP candidate becomes the president-elect uh, of Nigeria come 2023. What do you think would happen if there was uh, a gubernatorial election that was happening and SDP probably had like uh, maybe on, around the, you, um, you mentioned how many states now are running for governors, 28 states. 28. Yes, and you had 28 candidates. Do you not think that it was going to favor that something would happen if the SDP candidate. So they understand the dynamics of these things and they know why probably they are clamoring for it. But let's just keep all of those things aside, right? <laughs> because, <laughs> hey, it's not, I mean, you are, the, you are in the game. And if you say that you are cool with what INEC is doing, who are we? Mm -hmm. um, so how do we get Nigerians, right? To Because I, like I like the fact that you're quite focused on the goal. The goal is to let's push what we're doing. Let's just stay focused and stop... As far as you are concerned, some of these call for re-sequencing and all of that are distractions, right? So how do we start? Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. So how do we start to get the electorate, the people that would vote for you guys? How do we start to get them also to start to think in that direction? Because a lot more propagandas or a lot more transactions like this will come up in the in the future, where 
you'll be there will be so much distractions and people are not focused on what they're supposed to be doing so how do we get um, the electorate to be a lot more concentrated and focused you know like because i like your focus you're very clear you, you know your goal and you want to just move there and let's leave all of these distractions away how do we get nigerians to start being focused on what is important and not uh, major on the minors you see what i see is this when you're looking at demography you have to do segmentation and the Nigerian electorate is not homogeneous. So, like the people who are in Lekki, Victoria Island, the Port Harcourt, Abuja, and all these elite centers, that uh, they have certain things that they train together, and they are the connecting uh, ecosystem is public social media and mainstream media. But for the rest of the majority of the voters, they are disaggregated. They are in their silos all across. So there is no bridge in other local government in Bedway State. So when you go to Ijikwa, go to all those villages around Ado, they are not talking about sequencing of all these things, of our issues. They are talking about who is going to make the bridge to connect us to the rest of Nigeria. If you go to Gezawa in Kano, they don't have access to roads to carry their produce to come to Kano market or Gumel market or Duse. So they are limited by those issues. So when you go to Bayesa now, uh, they are talking about flooding. And uh, they, they abandoned every other agenda and they are dealing with flooding. So I want us to understand that the people are already focused. So any politician who meets them at the point of need is going to be the person who is talking about their issue. So there is no one single issue across the country that unifies all the electorate. But those who have preponderance of influence in the media can frame certain issues and make those issues to be like the mainstream issues and keep talking on your morning shows, evening shows, web webinars, and uh, Twitter spaces. And these issues will dominate. But the electorate that is voting based on those issues are not more than 12% to 15% of the electorate. So because the Social Democratic Party is grounded across the country. So we, are fo we, we take our issues from the issues that are important to the people. That's why we summarize the issues into two groups, the issues pertaining to poverty and the issues pertaining to insecurity, mm. that anybody who addresses those two issues will get majority of the vote, provided that the people believe that you genuinely are committed to those issues. And getting the message to the electorate is such that if you were to offer me free appearances on your television station every day, I might not take it because I can talk here for 100 days a majority of my electorate might not even get to see what I'm saying. So it requires me to diversify my interaction and pay, lay emphasis on grassroots connection uh, door to door, village to village. Uh, well, I get I get that point, but I believe that your electorate, are, trust me, they are watching when we say that they are watching. It might not come across like they are not watching, but they are watching. I was just going to say. Yeah, that's why I'm here. They are watching. <laughs> I'm just saying that we need to. No, I, I get. Yeah. I get the. I get your point. You know, yes, the real people that really need this, right? They might not be at the the conventional channels that we use, you know, to communicate. So that's why it's important that grassroots involvement must go on in some of these things and they do not even understand what sequencing or no resequencing or whatever it is that is happening so if you were to just summarize because I, I like that you know in the conversation you keep bringing up the goals and the vision right for your party and what you hope to achieve you know should you become president-elect so i was going to say that you know um, if you, for instance, 2023 happens and an SDP becomes presidential, um, president-elect, right? What would you do differently? You know, if you were to look at the Nigerian space right now, what would you do differently? Okay, what I would do, and today I was with President Buhari, we were together in Imo, and I see some of the problems that they see. The first thing we need to do is to form a proper government. The fact that you elect politicians into office does not mean that automatically a government will be formed. Sometimes they just come and compensate their 
campaign officials. Mm. So square peg, round holes, and all sorts of things like that. So the first thing we we'll do is to set up a government of service, a government that Nigerians have not seen for a long time, a government that makes the post office to work, a government that opens the school, a government that if you call a, a random number on a government letterhead, somebody is going to answer the, the call and tell you welcome to the Department of Water Resources, and it's going to answer your question. A government you can write a letter to, and within uh, 72 hours, you get a reply. Even if the reply doesn't have an answer, if it just comes back, we have acknowledgement, we will respond to you later, give us three ways to look into it. Mm. A government that works, a government that is the reason why Nigerians are going overseas. So that is what we have not had. And if you've lived in Nigeria for the past 50 years, like me, born 50 years ago, you have not witnessed a government before. You witness incumbent blowing shining all over the place, but you've not wit witnessed a government where the sanitary inspector is, is actually inspecting sanitation. The guy whose job it is to clean the gutter is actually showing up. The guy whose job it is to fill the bottle is actually coming. Uh, there's a nurse for you in your clinic. So just a government of services. That's what people will see first. You are not going to see a government of big men. You are going to see a well-detailed government that looks into things that you can just pick your phone. Within one month of coming to government, we will set up short codes and emergency call for every service you want to get in government. So you will see a government that works. After that, we would make sure that we provide food, housing, healthcare, education, and basic employment for Nigerians. Because until you do those things, you are not going to be able to eradicate or even dead poverty in any way. Three, we are going to ensure that the police actually becomes the people's police. I have spent the last 20, uh, 24 hours mingling with the IG of police, former IGs, um, senior police officers, and until President Buhari came this morning. And I've made it very clear to the police that what we are calling policing is just government exercising authority. That is not what policing should be about. Police should be an infrastructure of civilization that the people can use, people can rely on. And the police is the person you go to when you miss your way. Police is the person you go to when you have your wife about to deliver a baby and then you don't call your neighbor. You call a number and an emergency service is going to come. So it's just basically to civilize our government. Strong. We have enough resources mm -hmm. in this country to do these things. But the notion that we can use the resources of Nigeria to satisfy the aspirations and yearnings of 1% big men in government. Mm. That's what we have been doing so far. That is the difference. And you, you know that these ideas are not just my imagination. They are constitutional rights of Nigerians that are contained in Chapter 2 of the Constitution of Nigeria, titled Fundamental Objectives and Directive Principles of State Policy. Okay, let's this take... Country, Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. This country, given its wealth, is not supposed to have a hungry person anywhere, Absolutely. a homeless person, a Absolutely. person without medical care. This, more so that we have the resources. And that was why you noticed that I was the one started raising an alarm that the government budgeting is cheating Nigerians, yeah. that 80% of our crude oil was being stolen. I was making that noise for about six months before the government said, okay, I was exaggerating in 75%. Then when the government started confessing, other politicians joined me to now make it. Now the government is claiming that they are dealing with it. But I checked this morning and I saw that they even still stole crude oil, even today, mm. even though the government claims. But if you put all that money together, and you are not losing these billions every every month that you are losing, four point something billion dollars being lost, we will be able to take care of our people and create a government that leads, leads to the representation in the constitution that the wealth of this country will be used for the well-being and welfare of Nigerian people, and that the resources of this country will not be concentrated in the hands of a few, and that joblessness, hopelessness, and hunger she is something that we should not have in our country. Absolutely. This is the thing that will be different. Okay. But the kind of people you are going to find who will do this 
I alone making this noise will not do it. You need to make 6,000 appointments mm. in order to create the presidency that can deliver this to you. Mm. But this 6,000 presidency that will run for services, run all of these things, cannot be the people, cannot be lifted to people who contribute money to mm. your campaign. If you look around those who participate in the election, they are just the exact opposite of people who can run the government. And you have to separate between those who are running campaign and those who are actually going to run your government. Okay, That is wow. why you don't collect people's money to do elections. Absolutely. Let's quickly take some comments um, from our audience. We have a few comments. Let's quickly take some comments. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so there's a comment here that says, um, regarding tonight's um, subject matter, I think a bottoms-up um, sequence is a good idea in order to avoid confusion. That is, we should start with state's House of Assembly and governorship election and conclude with the National Assembly and presidential election. But the most important thing is that the elections should throw up the best of candidates who have what it takes to bring about the transformation Nigerians desire and deserve. Thank you. That's from Wayamdi, right? Yes, please. Why am I? I say for your guest analysis, Prince um, Adewale, the presidential candidate, I, I think he is running an issue based campaign. campaign. So good luck to him. Thank you, Wayamdi. Go ahead. So this person says there's no government in history that has invested in equipment and men in the Nigeria police and the military. Have we noticed that bank robberies have reduced drastically? There's a reason for that. You know, who is the next <laughs> bank <person>? robberies have <laughs> is, let me tell you why bank robberies have reduced drastically it's because kidnapping has increased Increased exponentially, exponentially. <laughs> <laughs> but prince we're running out of time if you had one thing to say i mean someone has said said brother that you're running an issue-based campaign do you think that would take you far as a presidential um, what's it called aspirant in this coming elections yes we have a lot of issues in this country but i don't think Nigerians have got into that consciousness yeah. that we need to start making our elections issue based. So, do you think that is a good strategy for your um, what's it called presidential aspirations and goals? Well, anybody who wants to be president has to have a sense of responsibility. Yeah, you don't become president just because it's a fanciful title. I came; these are the issues that were disturbing me in my private life. I don't have a personal problem. But these are the things that were disturbing me. That how can I live in a country with this enormous amount of wealth? And I'm ashamed when I walk on the street. Everywhere is dirty. People are hungry. Uh, education, you can't run proper school system. I'm in America. I can pick my phone and call any government department. I can't do that here. There's emergency. You have to call your neighbor. You can't call it. So these are the issues that brought me. That's number one. Number two, I've been going around the country. And when people come to me, in all parts of the country. I had a delegation that came all the way from Kassina. I spent 20 days, 20 days in Abuja trying to see me. When eventually I saw them, they came with issues. Mm. They were talking about being kidnapped. They were talking about security, you know, insecurity. Mm -hmm. They were talking about hunger. So the same issues that the people are telling me about are the same issues that I'm campaigning on. The only issue is that because I'm now a politician, and I'm in a political party, and I have other aspects, uh, candidates who are now mingling. But I refuse to let them uh, infect me with their own hypertension. Mm. I focus on the people <laughs> that I'm representing. I don't want to acquire this elite uh, quest for personal safety, mm. quest for stability for yourself, quest for security of your own career. I want to focus on the people know these issues. Mm. If we can do the hard work, of convincing them because Nigerians are not let me the state I see Nigerians that they are not stupid at all. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be fooled by the big parties. Absolutely. And then and they have the insult of being fooled by this smaller party again. Mm. So they don't know whether we are sincere, whether we are genuine, they don't know whether we are running to be noticed or we are running to collect our own cake. So it will take us time to convince them and now they are getting convinced they are turning. Absolutely. So I believe issues will work. Absolutely. In the end, you have to be focused. You have to know what you are doing. I love, I, I want love, to have, have a sense of responsibility. I love, I love the focus because every conversation around it this this to table it. tonight has been really focused. But thank you so much. We've been speaking to Prince Adewale Adebayo, the presidential candidate for the SDP. I mean, you need to check out 
his manifesto go online and check it out i think you know we, you know it's interesting how the big parties are just you know they are all over the place but there are quiet people in different parties that really yeah. have some great points i just only wish that everybody could come together and just form a very strong third force mm -hmm. but that is my own uh, wishing <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> absolutely so let that work let that work yeah. then i can i am i'm looking forward to an exciting elections but thank you so much i mean it was short notice and you made yourself available we do not take it for granted we really appreciate your time tonight and um, thank you for keeping us focused on the goal. <laughs> All right, thank, thank you, you so too. much. Thank All right. You. <laughs> All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yes, Adiola. <laughs> thank thank you. you. All right, so before we go, guys, thank you, Adiola. Thank you, Chinelo. Do ensure you follow us all over social media. It's at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed today's quote, here it is again. Voters must have faith in the electoral process of our delicate democracy, or before our delicate democracy to succeed. We must just trust what INEC is doing. Let's not feel like, you know what, um, they are trying to cheat us out of whatever it is that's our right. INEC knows what they are doing, and again, you can attest to that. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. <laughs>